let's see what kind of mysteries lurk underneath. I'm not really expecting any surprises down here, other than possibly a piece of piston ring, but I kind of doubt that after looking at the sleeves. No dowel pins on the oil pans, just some studs and the gasket and all those bolts. I didn't hear anything go clink clank clunk when I rotated it, so here we go. Nothing there. A little bit of moisture in the bottom. Sludge. Well, nothing's jumping out at me that saying oh my god as you can see this is a four main engine the 1855 was a seven main engine and that's just uh, the mains and the blocks for those that are not familiar uh, the 1855 has one between each piston you might say, why not have it on all of them? Uh, it's more iron, but probably the biggest thing is it's more machining. So it cuts down on cost. And when these were designed, engines didn't turn as fast. And it, it worked just fine. This is the Floto Screen oil pump. Of course, it's upside down at the moment. But the idea was there's an air chamber on the top. The suction would float on top of the oil, so if your oil got a little low, it could still come down and get it. But it was the theory was is it was picking up cleaner oil that all the crud settled to the bottom of the oil pan, and uh, by floating on top, you're getting the cleanest oil. That idea was come up with back when uh, tractors all had either no oil filter or bypass oil filters, when the majority of the oil going to the engine went from the pump and into the engine. Um, a little bit of it got filtered whereas this tractor and newer stuff is all full filtration goes through the pump and goes through the filter before it goes anywhere else all right we need to get the back cover off which i removed the bolts from that before i mounted it on the stand because it's a little uh, tight in there and then it might have to come up with the crank because of the dowel pins so we'll get that out get the oil pump out and we can start disconnecting uh, rods. As you can see, these use bolts with nuts. The bolts go all the way through instead of threading into the rod like the 1855. I'm not seeing any broken pistons. Anything like that. I think it was just ready for an overhaul the way those sleeves are worn. One thing I'm liking here, it's got the lips type steel in it. It has a lip type seal in it already. And it hasn't worn a groove into the crank. Uh, older tractors use a cork seal just like the front, but on the back and larger diameter. And once again, a lip seal is a big improvement. So. She's not gonna come off. I'll have to come up with a crank. Just a single bolt on these holds the oil pump in. Man, that one is coming out hard. There. 
It's a gear type pump. Oh, this might be a vein. Well, we'll tear it apart later. Oil gets sucked in, pumps right down here, and then it come, just pushes it right up through by the shaft until it gets up to, there it is, the hole that pushes it in the oil galley or gallery, depending on who you ask. And it's pressurized in here, so a little bit can get past this bushing, lubricate it, lubricate the gear. Now let's see what lurks under these caps. That bearing looks really good. Let's see what kind of size we're... Yeah, boy, that's... Uh... I can't believe someone put bearings in it and didn't bother uh, doing the rest. But people are strange. Oh, Clevite 77. That's a uh, brand name, not the year. One K two seventeen A. These bearings are the same as an eighty eight, eight eighty. Uh, I think the, I think the A's are they're either standard or ten under. I'll have to look in the book. There's nothing in this that tells it, but I might have some on hand. So we will push this piston down, 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 down. Let's make sure these caps are marked. That one has a four on it. That's a good sign. I would assume the piston has a... The upper half has a little more wear on it, but it's the one that takes the brunt. Let's get that out of there. Yeah, just a little discoloration on the one side there, but really not too bad. This should be the same part number. I've got 217A, K217A. Technically a 1K217A, but. Now because of that ledge that is worn into the sleeve from the rings, I'm not gonna be able to just push the piston out the other end. Uh, normally, uh, there's a tool called a reamer that can take that top edge off smooth it out um, but I'm going to try to get just the crank out and I'll take them either pull them out the this way which I guess I can I will drive them the sleeve out and they'll just stay with the sleeve so let's take the next one apart oops Well, that one looks good. Make sure it's mark number three. Well, it took me a moment to find the mark, but it is mark number three. Is this one gonna slide out? Nope. Maybe. It is, whoa. go look at that ringland broke on the piston that would definitely cause some compression loss let's see if there's any others I would say right here put that yep there's another uh, that's not supposed to come off. That's part of the piston. Let's 
the rings are springy. Yeah, but that still wouldn't help compression much. Interesting. Looking to see if there's some kind of uh, AP419. Oh, yep, there it is. M and W. Or is it W and M? M and W. I guess either way up, it's M and W. It's like they planned it. Let's see if I can get number four to do the same thing. It did. Let's see how bad it looks. This is the one that had no compression in the burnt valve. I'm not seeing any uh, broken lands. Piston rings seem springy. But this is number four, which was the one that uh, had the burnt valve, which might have saved it from uh, another fate, possibly. I'm wondering if someone got this engine hot and number four burner valve and the others uh, got hot and uh, broke the pistons. Let's do number six next. Bearing looks good. Let's see if she's marked. Took a while to find the marking on number three. There it goes. Let's see what number six holds for us. Once again, not too bad. Another good looking bearing. The only numbers I can find on number uh, six were 15. So I don't know if someone thought they didn't have a six stamp and so they put a five and a one and you just had to do the math or what. One and two had pretty good ridges on them. They might not come out. There it goes. I noticed this from the top side. I don't know if that's corrosion or heat damage, possibly from uh, pre-detonation, which would explain the uh, broken ring lands on number five. And M and W pistons are generally higher compression, which lends itself towards a uh, spark knock, pre-combustion, pre-detonation. Overall, not too bad. Let's do number five next. It was only making 105 PSI on a compression test.
Mmm. Let go, darn you. There it goes. Just needed that wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Another good looking bearing. Let's see what comes out the bottom. Gotta think, oh yeah, I gotta think these, uh, rings were probably a little weak. There's another, uh, broken ring land. I think we see why this one was only making 105 on compression. Too bad I didn't test, what was it, number three that was, had a couple chunks out. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Very similar to number three. That's my bet. Someone had some spark knot going on. It's that pre-detonation. Just it's hard on rings. It'll break uh, rings, it'll break piston or ring lands on the piston like this. And having a M and W aftermarket high compression pistons in it. Last one, which is number two, not number one. It's turning pretty easy now with only one piston in a hole. Another good looking bearing. The cap is marked poorly. I think I'm going to restamp some of these before they go off to the machine shop. Let's see what number two looks like. See if I can get lucky enough to drop it out like all the others. Let's turn this crank a little bit. Let me get my hand in there. Hmm. That one's catching good enough on that wear lip. I think these rings are a little weak for as easy as they're working past that wear ridge. I'd say the first ring got by. Now well, let's get the uh, crankshaft pulled out. I'm going to check the end play on the crankshaft, which is feeling like it's a bit excessive. It's controlled by the number three main here. I haven't loosened any of them up yet. So I'll get my feeler gauges out. Actually, I've already kind of gone through this, but I thought I better record this. So I'll just cut right to the chase. This one is 0 0.028. And it fits in there with just a little bit of drag. So about 28 thousandths clearance. Book calls, I don't, I keep forgetting to grab the 1600 book and bring it out here, but 1550 and 1650 books both call for 10 thousandths. They don't give a range, but uh, almost three times the factory amount is probably bad. <coughs> Someone probably rode the clutch. Well, it had a loader on it, so it did a lot of clutch work. Hopefully the wear is in the bearing and not the crankshaft. 
Guess we'll have to get it apart to know better. That bearing looks really good. That's the side it takes the load. Crank's trying to push down. Just trying to, there's dowel pins to keep them all lined up. Oh, a little bit of a spot there where, sorry, Mrs. Oliver guy. Where? Right there, it's through the outer layer. Crank itself looks all right so far. There we go. Oh, same thing here. Finally. Whew. I'm going to say the bearing took the brunt of it. This is the side that would get pushed on when you push on the clutch pedal. And notice how these oil channels are just about gone compared to this side, which really gets nowhere against it because there's nothing pulling back or pushing against the front end of the crankshaft. So this side's basically like new. And this side could be missing 18 thousandths. I guess it can measure. Well, yeah, it looks thin right there. Well, that's basically good news. That probably my crank is all right but having a loader on it it's a lot of clutch work push on on that clutch it's pushing against this crankshaft something has to take that force and stop it and that's it right there plus the other half same thing here on the bottom half yeah that oil channel is almost gone Whereas the front side, much better shape. It's got the Waukesha number, 190-118B. No Oliver part number on this one. I'm sure we can figure something out. Slide this camshaft out of here. Just eyeballing them, they all have good points to them. That's basically what goes first, is the very tip of them. That one's probably got just a little wear. I have to measure it a little closer, but I bet this is uh, going to be close enough. To uh, use as is. Well, I was kind of worried about uh, the 
crank being worn where that thrust bearing goes. But fortunately, I have some, had a, a uh, main in my uh, stash of parts. This is a standard main, which is what they were. Supposed to have 10 thousandths of end play. That's a 10 thousandths feeler. Well, that fits in there just right. A little bit of drag. Oops. So I think the crank is fine. I haven't measured it yet, but I'm thinking it might even be able to stay at standard. standard. There's no uh, wear or anything, but I'm still going to send it in, have it professionally looked at, clean, all that good stuff, polished, or turned to ground or if it needs it. Oh, this is a, oh yeah, this one's the KBSA. I think that's a 3,000th under main. I've got a standard as well. Starting to drive sleeves out. I'm starting with number two because that piston couldn't get past the wear groove. Maybe the rings are actually halfway decent on that one. Just a chunk of wood get against the, the bottom of the sleeve, hit her with a hammer. And this one's already, I already started on it. It's starting to move pretty easy, so. I don't want it to go flying. So maybe I'll rotate this engine and do it sideways so it doesn't just fall out on the floor. I guess it's not going as much as I thought. It's probably come a little bit. I was feeling the piston sticking out the top there. I think it looks like, looks like it got past the top ring. Then the next one's probably catching. You can see it's come a little bit. Well, it don't look crusty on the outside. That's good. Let's see if we can get two to pop the rest of the way. I switch to this big uh, piece of plastic that a friend got me. Ugh, just a little farther. See what slides on out. Rings feel a little stronger on this one. Top one's a little weaker. Just squeezing them by hand. All the pistons are out cranks out heads off just uh, four more sleeves to get out of there
Oh, the water jacket's pretty darn clean. Not a bunch of crud. Have to clean up them O-ring lands on the bottom and see how good they look before I pass final judgment. But it's a good sign. Definitely cleaner than that 310 out of the 1855 in the cooling system anyways. So I think that's where we're at. A little bit of uh, washing, cleaning, gasket removing. Get it cleaned up some before I take it to the machine shop. So he doesn't have to do that and charge me for it. Take up uh, more of his time too. Still have to pull the pistons off from the connecting rods. That won't take long. Pop a snap ring, push it out. Take it all in to get professionally checked out and cleaned and done whatever needs to be done. Removing pistons from rods. Of course now it's not going to slide out. But this has the two-piece wrist pin bushings. There it goes. And even something like a 1600 really needs to be upgraded to the one-piece wrist pin bushings. That one's loose. I also thought I'd go over how these are lubricated. There's a hole in the top and the oil ring when it scrapes oil off. When the oil ring scrapes oil off the sleeve, there's holes in the side of the piston that it can go through and that oil ends up getting in the top there and goes through this hole in the top and drip lubricates the uh, connecting rod wrist pin bushings. But I thought I'd also explain how these uh, the rod bearings get lubricated. They are not pressure lubricated in these engines. This is for all intents and purposes an 88 engine, Oliver 88. It's a 190 series, just like it says on the rod. Waukesha 190 series. There are holes drilled here now if we go over to the block, right next to the sleeves are little holes and oil squirts out from those and every time the rod comes around, it gets in line with that squirter and it squirts oil and hits that little, uh, this is upside down, but it catches that little hole there and uh, oil gets in there and and does its thing and obviously that works there's a lot of 88s out there that ran and 77s 66s the crankshaft is pressure lubed and so is the cam bearings on this one there's only a bushing on the front and the cam just rests in the uh, parent bore of the block on the rest of the other three So on these, it's a good idea to uh, let oil pressure build up before you start revving up on them because it's got to fill that channel and start squirting and get in there. Obviously the system works or they all would have seized up years ago. But that's the gist of it. I was just cleaning things up and look at that. This engine was assembled in November of 63. Tractor was assembled in December of 63, so that all makes sense. There's also on the back of the block here, a bit of a number, an 11. Don't look like it got stamped very good. Sometimes you find a date here where the front tank mount bolts to the block. And like the 1855, sometimes they're over here by the, where the distributor goes in. Not in the case with the 1600. I think we'll call that another episode. Appreciate everybody watching and we'll come back to it eventually.